In this video, I want to answer the question, can our state of mind, can our optimism actually affect our physical well-being and vitality? Can having a positive state of mind and being optimistic fight off pathogens and cancers, diseases and illnesses? Or is there no connection between the two? Watch this video to learn more. According to dogma, there is no connection between your mind and your physical well-being. That's to say that the two operate completely independently. Your body and its well-being fights off illnesses and diseases on its own, and there's no relation between your state of mind and your body's ability to do this. Many psychologists took this as being fact and the truth up until the last 10 to 20 years whereby a lot more scientific research has been done to look into this matter and some interesting findings have actually come about. The first study is a nursing home study whereby one floor of this nursing home were given control, all the residents on this floor were given control over things like what they had to eat, uh, what they watched on television and they were also responsible for things such as watering the plants and stuff like that whereas residents on the other floor weren't given any of these responsibilities and didn't have any of the control over their environment. What seems like relatively insignificant differences between the two floors actually led to a very interesting conclusion. And that conclusion was that those residents that had control, that had more power, had more responsibility, were more active, they were happier, and they lived longer. The second study was done with rats. Three different groups of rats were injected with what's called a sarcoma, which is basically a malignant tumor or cancer. One group was a control group where they were injected with this sarcoma and then left alone. The second group, they were injected with the sarcoma, but they were also being, the rats were also being subjected to electrical shocks. These were electrical shocks that the rats didn't have control over. They were helpless. They couldn't stop these electric shocks from happening. And the third group were also given electric shocks. But if the rats managed to push down on a bar, they were able to turn these electric shocks off. There were some very interesting results from this study. In the control group, 50% of the rats were able to fight off the sarcoma or the cancer. In the group where the rats were helpless, in which they couldn't turn off the electric shocks, only 27% of those could fight off the cancer. But in the group where the rats managed to turn off the electric shocks, in other words, they had control over their environment to switch off the electric shocks, 70% of those rats fought off the cancer. This was a demonstration that a psychological state learned helplessness could actually cause cancer. The third study is a huge study that was done with 200 men over 50 years. This study looked at lots of different characteristics of the men's psychology, but also external factors such as wealth, career success, and stuff like this, and compared that with their physical well-being. So did they have disease or were they healthy? things like that. The conclusion from this very extensive study is that by the age of 45, there was a huge difference between the people that were pessimistic or had a very negative or helpless mindset and those that were optimistic. Those that were pessimistic had more diseases and showed much less physical well-being than those that were optimistic. This experiment is actually being run right now, so we'll see how it progresses into old age. But at the moment, it seems like the more optimistic you are, the healthier and fitter you are. The fourth study was a relatively small study done in 1980 by a psychologist called Chris Peterson. He looked at a certain number of students over a couple of years, and he found from his studies that those that were more pessimistic went to see the doctor more often and came down with more infectious diseases. The fifth study is about cancer patients. One group of cancer patients were going through their regular chemotherapy, radiotherapy treatment, and they were looked at and compared to another group of cancer patients who were also going through their regular treatment, but on top did some cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy, of course, is a technique and therapy or skill that can be used to improve one's sense of optimism. The interesting result of this study is that those that took the cognitive behavioral therapy had a massive increase in natural T killer cells, whereas the control group didn't have this increase at all. In other words, being optimistic led to an increased immune system response. In the sixth study, an Australian researcher took 26 people, 26 men whose wives had just died and got them to take blood tests one week after the death and six weeks after the death. The results of this study after one week, the immune system was very depressed, but after six weeks, the immune system had already shown signs of recovering back to normal levels. Just another example of how you, 
the psychological state can affect physical vitality and well-being, specifically the immune system. In other words, and in conclusion to all of these studies, there's a large and increasing body of evidence to suggest that your psychological state has a very, very real effect on your physical well-being. If you have depression or if you have a negative psychological state, your immune system doesn't function as well as it would do if you have a positive psychological state and if you're optimistic. So come on, why is this the case? Is there actually a scientific reason for this to actually be happening? Well, it turns out I did some digging and there actually is. See, there's a big chain of events that are triggered by depression and anxiety. The chain begins with a bad event, adversity, or something that sets off or triggers something bad. And those with a pessimistic explanatory style, or those that interpret the events in a bad way, they tend to see these things as pervasive, permanent, and personal. In other words, they see these problems as insurmountable, and this is what leads them into depression. They feel helpless, and therefore they feel depressed. Depression actually depletes what's called catecholamines in your body, which then increases the production of endorphins. And unfortunately, when endorphin production goes up, your immune system levels go down. This enables pathogens to go wild and diseases to spread, and it basically reduces your ability to fight off illnesses. This chain that I've just mentioned is all testable and has been shown again and again. This isn't just some pseudoscience, this appears to be a very real chain of events that happens to depressed people. So why am I talking about this link between your psychology and your physical well-being? Well, the important message I'm trying to get across to you is that if there is a very real connection between your mind and your physical health, that's good because you have an ability to improve your state of mind. You have an ability to change your level of optimism. And you can change your level of optimism by learning skills such as cognitive behavioral therapy, which is something that's used quite common now in hospitals and in, by therapists to improve the psychological state of patients. By using cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, we can interrupt the way our mind works and produce more positive outlooks on life, which then will filter down to our physical well-being and make us feel healthier, improve our body's ability to fight off diseases and even cancers, as studies have shown. In my next video, I'm going to talk in much more detail about a very practical technique that you can use. It's a cognitive behavioral therapy technique that will help you control your thoughts and induce a more positive state of mind. Finally, if you like this video, please consider liking it and sharing it and subscribe to the channel. Each week I'm going to put out a video like this where I do a bunch of reading during the week and I figure out some interesting stuff, try and compress it into a nice short video and present it to you. I hope you find it useful. I'll see you next week.